So this right here is the liquid glass style animation. It was introduced in the iOS 26 update. Honestly, I think it looks really cool. And in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how you can make it inside of After Effects completely natively. There's a bunch of tutorials out there. I've watched them all on how to make it. And I've compiled this video to be the best like tips and tricks and also the easiest way to make this aesthetic because some of them make it like really complex and they're really long videos. So I'm gonna try to keep this short, simple and to the point. And also make sure to stay tuned to the end because throughout this video, I'm not gonna tell you where, but I'm gonna be giving away a free Mogert template of a liquid glass animation that you can use inside After Effects and Premiere Pro. So it's completely pre-animated. You can just change the text, the sizing, position, whatever, and you have a finished liquid glass looking effect. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right, guys, we're inside of After Effects. Let's do this. I'm honestly really excited. Let's first go ahead and grab our rectangle tool. Hold on it to select the rounded rectangle tool, of course. We're going to drag in a nice rectangle like this, and then we're going to change the roundness over here to 500%. So we get these nice rounded edges. Now we're just going to go ahead and straight jump into these effects. I'm going to change this rectangle right here into an adjustment layer. And actually, before I do so, I'm also going to hit Command D on this layer to duplicate it and then turn that top layer off. So it's, it's just a standard rectangle layer. We're going to hit enter to rename this. We're going to call this top and then we're going to hit enter on this one. We're going to call this bottom and let's turn off the visibility of the top one because we'll get to that later. Now we're going to apply some effects. We're going to come over here to our effects and presets and we're going to search for the Gaussian blur effect and we're going to use Gaussian blur legacy and we're going to go ahead and turn up that blurriness. Now you can see we kind of have this nice little blurry glass box like the first step. Step number one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and search for a map effect. Now this is probably the key, the goal. This is pretty much all you need to do this effect really we're gonna apply that map effect we're gonna change the displacement map from bottom to top and we're gonna change the source from source to effects and masks and then change this max horizontal displacement to 100 change this max vertical displacement to 100 like that and then we're gonna change this from green to luminance and red to luminance as well shout out to Tom's projects for giving me this tip this is honestly where I got this idea from but really beast but now we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start affecting this top layer. So now we're gonna turn the visibility of this layer off and we're gonna turn the visibility of the top layer on. So we have this black layer on. It doesn't really matter what color it is. Actually, this layer does. It, it does matter. It has to be black. This one has to be black. Sorry. <laughs> we're gonna right click this and we're going to hit layer styles and then we're going to hit inner glow right there. And then we're gonna right click it one more time and we're going to hit layer styles and we're going to hit inner shadow. Now let's go ahead and hit the drop downs over here of the inner shadow and the inner glow and let's affect these. So inner glow, starting with that, we're gonna change this color from this weird yellow color color to white and let's go ahead and increase that size just a little bit so we can kind of slightly start seeing it I might increase the range as well or yeah increase the range so we get this nicer like soft feathered effect and maybe the choke we'll, we'll leave the choke at zero so yeah the goal is we're just trying to create like a nice like highlight like this and then I might change the opacity down to something like 45% so we have this cool inner glow going on right there then we're gonna go over here to the inner shadow change it from inner shadow it's actually not an inner shadow it's going to be in our glow or like a rim edge. We're going to change that color to white. So we're going to go ahead and then make sure that the size of it is turned maybe up to like 10 ish. Let's see if that's good. And then the choke as well has to be up as well. I think I'm missing a value. I believe it should be hundred percent. Oh yeah. Sorry. It has to be a normal. The blend mode can't be multiplied there. There you go. Okay. So now that that size is a little bit too large, we're going to change that size back to like five ish. We want it to be really thin, maybe even two actually. And then we'll yeah keep that opacity down to like 75 percent and there we pretty much have a nice like shiny edge honestly it looks really cool it just really helps add on that shine that edge makes it feel like it's actually a piece of glass and yeah that's looking pretty good now we're going to collapse that top layer change the blend mode to lighten and turn on the visibility of the bottom layer and ta-da we are getting there with a cool glass morphism effect honestly it's looking pretty good so far there's a couple things that we need to adjust though so you can see we have that display placement going on. What essentially this is doing is it's making, if we increase or decrease these values, it's going to move the background layer left or right or up or down. And it creates that like weird glass morphism distort effect. But we want to make this look even cooler. So there's a couple ways you can do that. I am going to use, this is my own trick, my own sauce, the optics compensation effect. So I'm gonna apply this optics compensation a little bit before our displacement map actually. And then we're going to increase the field of view and hit reverse lens distortion. Let me see if I can just 
just turn off these visibilities of these two layers and apply it to our actual background layer so you can see what it's doing. So it's going to warp it into a circle if it's not lens distortion, but if you enable lens distortion, it's going to warp it out. What the lens distortion is doing is taking this background layer and it's making it super warped like this, it gives it the effect of like that weird trippy glass. And yeah, if we turn the visibility of everything back on, you can see, hopefully I didn't undo that. Yeah, there we go, we still have it. We have this really sick looking glass effect. Honestly, I think it looks super cool. It gets the job done for something that we're doing. Now it's time to actually animate it. So in this test sample video that I made earlier, I have all these different options, these text animations, these icons, and this UI. I'm not gonna go down like the exact step-by-step -step breakdown of how I animated this layer and this text animation and this pop in because some of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I will give you the general gist of everything so that you understand how to do it yourself and make your own custom UI templates because you know your animations are gonna be different from my animations. I'm gonna have different needs. You're gonna have different needs. By the way, I'm just super excited I get to finally do this effect. I've loved this effect forever. Not to be that guy. I did it first. My website has been having glass morphism since like 2024, maybe like early 2023 even. This shit ain't new. I've been doing this. But anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the drop down on this bottom layer over here and we're gonna go ahead and start animating the actual like shape of it. So anyways, anyways, we're gonna hit the drop down on our bottom layer and then we're gonna hit the drop down on the contents and the rectangle one and then hit the drop down on rectangle path. And now you're gonna see what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be affecting the size. So I'm gonna unlink this so that way we can actually adjust like the size of it and it'll stay relative with the rounded edges. Nothing gets stretched or anything. We're also gonna hit the drop down on the top layer and hit the drop down basically on the exact same rectangle path, rectangle path one that I did over here. We're gonna take the pick width tool of the size on the top layer and drag it to the size of the bottom layer. Do the same thing for the position and do the same thing for the roundness as well. So now that we just pick whip tooled everything, you can see if I increase or decrease the size of the bottom, it will affect the entire shape without any like stretching or distortion. But you can see we're running into a little error here because you see the displacement map has a limit edge. So I moved the background image a little bit too far down. That makes sense. Anyways, the fix to this is you go to effects and presets, you search for the CC reptile effect, you apply that before your displacement map, click repeat, and then change that to unfold. And then I'm just going to change all these values to like 3000. So we unfold the background layer to 3000 that and then you can see ta da, it's gone. We have a nice background that's continuous and blurred out. And we can basically move this displacement as far or left or down or up as right as we want. And we won't encounter any issues with it whatsoever. So yeah, that's pretty much how you can do that to fix that error. And of course, once again, if you wanted to make it less blurry or even more blurry, you can just increase or decrease that Gaussian blur legacy effect. And really quickly before going to that next part, if you want to create more liquid glass UI animations for your effects, but you don't want to have to take the time to like constantly build all these effects from scratch, we do have a brand new liquid glass preset pack of over 20 plus presets of Mogurt files and After Effects files. And you can just drag and drop into your Premiere Pro project or After Effects and just create liquid glass style animations that are pre-animated. You just have to change the text. They're super easy to use. So make sure to check it out if you want to make more liquid glass style animations with different variations, different sizes, different animation styles and whatnot. I'll link down below. Anyways, let's get back to the tutorial. Now let's go into the actual animation of it. So now that we have the size of our bottom layer pick whipped, we're going to go ahead and hit a keyframe at the, like maybe one second in when we want the animation to like end. And we're gonna hit a keyframe there and we're gonna go a couple frames before. And then we're just gonna change these both to zero like that. Ta-da. Or actually, if you could start with just one and then you see we have this cool like sliding effect. But if you want to do both of them at zero, then they'll just both like scale in like a normal animation. But I actually kind of like this first animation right here. So it, like opens like a, like a screen or something. So now we're going to select these keyframes. We're going to hit the graph editor right here. And then we are going to go ahead and hit the easy ease and drag this anchor point in so that we have this nice smooth animation. And ta-da, that looks so sick if you ask me my personal opinion. That that's pretty much how I'm gonna be creating these effects. So you kind of get the gist here. However, we're going to be making a UI. Keep in mind, this glass morphism effect is cool. Just like anything, too much of anything is, is not good. So we wanna make sure we don't like oversaturate it as well. By the way, I'm gonna like decrease the roundness just a tad bit so it's nice and smooth. So what I wanna do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new shape layer and I'm just going to drag this, this rounded rectangle like this. We're gonna increase that roundness again so that we have this nice similar looking edges. and. 
now we're just gonna go ahead and do the same process that we did for the top layer by right clicking it. I'm gonna also just change this to the red layer. So I know the red layer right here is the uh, this new like UI hover animation. We're gonna hit, right click it, hit layer styles. We're gonna hit inner glow and yeah, there we go. We have inner glow on it. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit the drop down on the inner glow and then change that from yellow to the white again. Change this blend mode from screen to normal, very important. And then we're gonna increase that size a lot. So we're gonna increase it like that or increase the range a bit. And let's go ahead and maybe change the choke down to like all the way down to zero. I think that's looking pretty good, kind of good. Okay, and then we'll just decrease that opacity down to 46 like that. Yeah, that's looking okay. We're gonna collapse this. We're gonna change this entire rectangle blend mode to lighten over here. There it is, lighten. And then actually that inner glow is a little bit too bright for me personally. So I'm gonna decrease it just down to like 19% now. Okay, so now we have that. That's looking pretty good. We just decreased the glow. We're gonna go ahead and go to our effects and presets. We're gonna search for this tint effect over here. Drag and drop that to this layer. Change the matte black tint to white and then decrease this entire tint amount down to something like 25% maybe or like 19% as well. And then I actually am backtrack. I'm gonna change this blend mode to from lighten back to screen. So that way we have this really cool like highlight text that will highlight any text animations that we want to create. This is really cool so far. Lastly, we just need to make some text for it. So I'm gonna grab my text tool. I'm gonna be using the SF Pro font, which by the way, for those of you who don't know, that is Apple's secret font that they don't want you knowing, but that's it. So you can hit type here. Oh, that is so cool. I accidentally typed behind the layer and then it's like distorting all the text with the glass. So you can see it's truly an accurate effect. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and drag this right here to this like search bar, I guess this could be. And then what we're going to do is we're going to search for a typewriter effect, which has honestly been one of my top favorite animations for text recently. By the way, we do have a new video called top three text animations that you can create inside of After Effects. They're kind of also inspired in the similar Apple style. They go way more in depth into these text animations than this video, but if you wanna check it out, it's linked right here. Let's apply it only to the text layer. We need this text layer to have the typewriter. So I'm gonna apply it like that and ta-da, you see it just disappeared. I'm gonna hold Option Square Bracket Left to trim it down and now you can see if we play it out. Got this cool typing effect. Hit the U keyframe to just see the keyframes. Drag that in closer, hit the graph editor, hit this easy ease and we're gonna ease in that text animation and ta-da, that is looking pretty sick if you ask me. So last thing I recommend doing is just going ahead and animating this layer as well. We're just gonna have to do the same exact thing that we did before with that rectangle path. You unlink the scale and then you can literally just go in and keyframe the exact X or Y coordinates you want. So I'm gonna change this first X one to zero. And yeah, that's looking pretty sick. So I'm gonna turn this Y coordinate to zero. So that way it does like an inverse. So I'm gonna, of course, make sure I easy ease this with the bevel as well. Yo, <laughs> that is so sick. I'm loving this, I'm loving this. this. This effect is just so fucking cool. In my personal opinion, I know a lot of people are really Really hating this glass morphism. The fact that you can also just make it inside of After Effects is really sick. Let's pick what the top one to the bottom layer entirely. So yeah, now if I drag it around, you see it distorts the entire image wherever I go. That's crazy. So yeah, there you guys pretty much have it. A very simple, quick tutorial on how you can make some cool UI animations. Of course, just go ahead and animate this to your liking. Use easy ease keyframes to make the animation look smooth. Use typewriter effects to add the typing effects. And then one last other cool hack that I always like to use, I'm going on Google. There's this a Chrome extension. It's called SVG Export. It will basically let you add this extension to your homepage. And then if you go to a website like Apple, you can just go ahead and literally download any icon on here straight, like the straight exact vector. So if I pull it up, I'm going to grab SVG Export and then I can go to Apple and you can see all the entire like Apple UI icons. I can just straight up download as an SVG file and then use those as animations inside of After Effects if you need icons for your UI animation. But that's just a quick tip. Anyways, hope you guys found something useful. If you guys want to check out that free sample to that Mogurt, I've linked down to it below in the description. Let me know what you guys think. And also, if you want to speed up your edits even faster with our 20 essential presets for these Apple liquid glass animation styles, they're also linked down below in the description. And if you want to learn how to make more cool text animations in the style of Apple as well, you can check out this video linked right here.